Hi everyone, in this video clip on 13.1, I'll be introducing to you a new topic that is on complex numbers. Okay? In this video clip titled Introduction to Complex Numbers, I'll be introducing what are complex numbers. Now, in back in your primary school, all the way until secondary school, you have actually learned, basically, started off with integers. Okay? Then we move on to a broader category that is rational numbers. Then we talk about irrational numbers, numbers like square root 2, square root 3, pi, e. All these are irrational numbers. And be and together, the rational numbers and irrational numbers form this group of numbers, which we call the real numbers. Okay. So in this uh, video clip, I'll be going through this another group of numbers, which we call complex numbers. Complex numbers together with the set of real numbers form the entire number system. Okay? So what are complex numbers? Okay, for example, when mathematicians try to solve problems like this, they actually realize that there is no solution for x. In fact, to be more precise, it actually means there is no real solution for x. That means there are no real values of x that satisfy this equation. Because if you try to subtract one on both sides and you take the square root, okay, the scientific calculator will tell you that there is no solution. Okay? Uh, likewise, another form in the equation, x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. If you use the quadratic formula to solve for x minus b plus minus b squared, Take away 4ac over 2a, and you get 2 plus minus 4 minus 20 over 2. Okay, and so we have 2 plus minus negative 16 square root over 2. Now, what are then complex numbers? Because of this kind of issue where we cannot evaluate, okay we try to introduce you this number that is called i. And this i is actually given by the positive square root of minus 1. Uh, with this introduction of numbers, uh, this term here becomes plus minus i. And this term becomes 2 plus minus positive square root 16, positive square root minus 1 over 2. And it becomes 2 plus minus 4i over 2, and so we have 1 plus minus 2i. Okay, so a complex number, in short, is made up of two things. The notation for complex number is the usual z, and it's made up of x plus i y, where this i is actually the positive square root of minus 1. And the x and y values are real numbers. Okay, are real numbers. So in other words, for example, in the first example, our z is plus minus i. That means it's either i or minus i. So the x value in this case is 0, y value is 1. And in this case, the x value is 0, the y value is minus 1. In the second example, we have 1 plus 2i or 1 minus 2i. In this case, the x is 1, the y is 2, and in the second case, the x is 1, y is negative 2. Okay? The x and y are what we call the real part of z, and the y is called the imaginary part. Of z. Okay. Let us know a little bit more about complex numbers by studying some of the operations involving complex numbers now.
Okay, for two complex numbers, okay, they are equal if the real and imaginary parts are equal. So that means if I have z1 equals to x1 plus i y1, and z2 equals to x2 plus i y2, okay, if you are to actually say that z1 and z2 are equal complex numbers, that means that x1 equals x2 and y1 equals to y2. So real parts must be equal and the imaginary part must be equal for both numbers. How about addition, subtraction, multiplication and division of complex numbers? So for example, we have x1 plus i y1. If I'm to add x2 plus i y2, okay, uh, it's quite natural for people to add the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. So we have x1 plus x2, okay, the sum of the real parts, and the sum of the imaginary parts. Okay. Likewise, if you involve subtraction, okay, then you will find the difference, right? x1 minus x2 for the real part, and for the imaginary part, y1 minus y2. Like this. Okay. Multiplication gets a little bit harder because if you have x1 plus i y1 multiplied by x2 plus i y2, what happens? You have x1, x2, the usual algebra. Then x1 times i y2, so it's i x1 y2. And this times this gives me i x2 y1. And finally, this times this gives me i squared y1 y2. Okay. Now, what is i squared? We just now have already introduced you to you i. is given by the positive square of minus 1. So if we have i squared, it's actually minus 1. Okay. So I can write this one as minus y1, y2 to get x1, x2. I have x1, x2 minus i, y, sorry, minus y1, y2. Okay, because i squared is minus 1. And then gathering the i together, the x1, y2 plus x2, y1. Okay, that is multiplication. And finally, division. If you have x1 plus i, y1 divided by x2 plus i, y2, what will happen? Okay, we do something similar to what we have done back in your secondary school, that is to do rationalization. So we have x1 plus i, y1 multiplied by x2 minus i, y2, x2 plus i, y2 multiplied by x2 minus i, y2. Uh, why multiply by this number? Now this number is actually later on you learn that it's called conjugate of x2 plus i, y2. Now, conjugate. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, the denominator becomes a real number. You will see soon. The denominator becomes x2 squared minus i x2 y2 plus i x2 y2 minus i square y2 squared. Okay. And the numerator becomes x1 x2 minus i x1 y2 plus i y1 x2 minus i square y1 y2. Okay, the usual algebra. And the denominator can, can simplify. Knowing that i square is minus 1, so minus i square will be 1. So we got x2 square plus y2 square. See? This becomes a real number. And the, the numerator becomes x1, x2 plus y1, y2 minus i into x1, y2 minus x2, y1. 
So this becomes the real part and this part becomes the imaginary part of the complex number. Okay? Let me just give some examples, uh, this time around numerically. Okay? So suppose uh, you may want to copy this example. Okay? Okay. Find okay, part 1, z1 plus z2 and part 2, z1 minus 2z2 okay. and uh, part 3 is uh, z1 times z2 and part 4 is z1 divided by z2 okay. If my z1 is 2 plus i and z2 is 3 plus 2i for example okay. Simple example like this Okay, just go through the motion about all the various operations and on the z1 and z2. So for z1 plus z2, it becomes 2 plus i plus 3 plus 2i. And that gives me 5 plus 3i. Adding the real parts together and adding the imaginary part together. And how about z1 minus 2z2? It becomes 2 plus i minus 2 times of 3 plus 2i. So we have 2 minus 6, so it's negative 4, and i minus 4i, so it's negative 3i. So there is the second part. And for part 3, we have z1 times z2, so that is the same as 2 plus i multiplied by 3 plus 2i. And using your algebra to multiply term by term, you get 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2i is 4i, i times 3 is 3i, and i times 2i is 2i squared. Okay. And 2i squared of course is minus 2, so we have 4 plus 7i. 4 plus 7i. Then how about the last one, z1 over z2? Uh, z1 is 2 plus i, uh, z2 is 3 plus 2i. And you want to divide, you can multiply by the conjugate. Like this. And what we have is 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times minus 2i is minus 4i, i times 3 is 3i, i times minus 2i is minus 2i squared. Okay? This 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i is 3 squared plus 2 squared. And so we'll have it as 8 minus i over 9 plus 4, 13. So that becomes uh, that's the answer to the division. And I hope these uh, four examples will actually help you better understand how operations is being done on complex numbers. And that comes to the end of this video clip. Thank you.